the lower shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Hit it, bud! The, the Lord is good. God is good. The Lord is good. Come on, bud. Stand up with me. The Lord is good. The Lord is good. The Lord is good. But what you got to say? What do you got to say? What you got to say about the Lord Jesus? is good? The Lord is good. The Lord is good. The Lord is good. Oh, you should know. The Lord is good. The Lord is good. All you got to know is the Lord is good. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yes. Come on, bud. Lord is good. And in every, every shoe. And in it's bad. And it's good. And it's done. And it's every look. Yeah. Good morning, Inspiration Church. Thank you for joining us today. We have a very important message for you today. We are going to pray for you. My name is Emmeline Jones. My name is Carlos. I hope you enjoyed this prayer. God, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for everybody that's at the gr grocery store. We thank you they don't get sick. We help, we, we, we help nobody will die. You just now we pray. Amen. Now, I have a very important message for you, and I am going to pray for everybody in this world. God, we thank you for this day. Um, we hope everybody that works everywhere, the people who work at the hospital, the doctors, the um, grocery store people, everybody that work, we hope you keep them safe, and I hope you keep them I hope they pray and keep and keep praying every single day so you will get to heal them and you will get to do everything else. Thank you for being God. That's for our message for today. Thank you for watching. Bye. Yay. Yay. Good morning, Inspiration Kids. It's Miss Sparkle again, and I'm happy to be back with you guys this week. I hope that you've all been doing very well since the last time we've met, and I hope that you've had a really good week this week. I'm back again to give you your Bible story for the week and to say a prayer with you. So tune in and make sure mom, dads, aunts, uncles, cousins, grandmas, whoever's with you, ask you questions about the story so we can make sure you're listening and you're learning. Today's story is about Daniel. This is Daniel. Daniel loved God. He lived in a country where he was not allowed to pray. But Daniel prayed anyway because he loved God. Some people didn't want Daniel to pray, so he was thrown into a den of lions. But guess what? God kept Daniel safe. The lions didn't hurt him at all. And that's important for us to remember is that God will always keep us safe from any harm or any danger. All you have to do in those really tough moments is just pray to God and ask him to keep you safe. And God will always keep his promises for you. Our prayer for today says, Dear Lord, please give me what I ask if you'd be glad about it. But if you think it's not for me, please help me to do without it. Help us to listen to your voice. Help us to be willing and quick to do your work. Help us to be friendly and loving. And help us to thank you every day for all your gifts to us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. I hope you guys have enjoyed the story for today. And I hope you really enjoyed the prayer as well. I'm so excited that you guys joined in and I can't wait to see you next week. 
But remember always to love, to live, and to lead. See you next time. Good morning, VIP youth. I am so, so excited to be here with you guys. I know it's been a while since we've seen each other, so I could not resist the opportunity to come and just give you a few words of encouragement this morning, a few words of love and hope and wisdom from me. Pastor Chris has been, been doing a phenomenal job with bringing you guys a message each and every Sunday. And so I just want to help him out by giving you guys the same love and kindness and warmth that he has extended to you during these months of quarantine. So here's where I want to start. Any of you guys ever just had really bad habits, like bad habits, okay? So there's the thing about habits. Once you start, you just want to keep doing it and keep doing it and keep doing it. But then you realize at some point that maybe this is not the best thing for me to do. So you think about like, I want to start doing new things. I want to do this. It's kind of like those New Year's resolutions where you set in your mind on December 31st, when the new year comes, I'm going to start exercising. When the new year comes, I'm going to start reading more. I'm going to read one book a month or I'm going to stop doing something. Sometimes it's not that we want to start doing something new. Sometimes it's that we want to stop some habits or some old ways that we've had and we want to make a new transition as that new time of year comes. But certainly we don't have to wait until the new year to make those changes. There's something about when we realize where we've been and that it's not the best path or the best road for us, that we can get in our minds that now is the time to make something new. It doesn't have to be January 1st. You don't have to go the entire year doing the same things, making the same choices, there is always an opportunity for something new, especially when God is encouraging you, speaking to you, and placing it on your heart to make a new decision, to make a new path, to make your way straight if they've been crooked in the past. And so there's something about our flesh. Like I know you've heard before in church or in other services or in youth church, you've heard it said before, you know, that the flesh sometimes takes control and the flesh is what leads our decisions and the flesh is what makes us do the things we do because we, we're born into a world of sin and so our flesh just just drives itself towards sinful ways it's what comes naturally but when you've got that life rooted and grounded in God and what God can do in your life there's something about the spirit of the Holy Spirit that steps in and intervenes when we need it the most, that steps in and gives us that conviction. And if you're not sure what conviction is, that conviction is something that tugs on you and just makes you feel like, man, I should not be doing this. Like, this is not the right thing for me to do. That's what conviction is. And so when we're, we're going down those paths and we see that we're, we're doing things or making poor choices, our grades are suffering, the circle of people that we're around is probably not the best because they're influencing us to do things that we would not normally do. That's when you know it's time to, to shift gears and to make new habits, healthy habits, smart habits, things that will lead to better decisions or, or better outcomes in life. And so for me personally, I know it seems uh, maybe small, but I'll share with you one of the habits that I had. So for years and years and years, I went without drinking soda, okay? Like I had no desire for it. And then And then one day I cracked open a Dr. Pepper. Dr. Pepper might not be everybody's thing. Maybe yours is Big Red or Orange Crush. I don't know, but I love Dr. Pepper. It is just like the best soda I've ever had in my life. And I found myself drinking it more and more and more. And I was like, man, this is really good. To the point where every day on my way to work, I would stop McDonald's, get a 32 ounce Dr. Pepper because the large drink is only a dollar. 
And then I would drink that before lunchtime. And then I would like run off at lunchtime and get me another 32 ounce Dr. Pepper and drink that by the end of the day. And I would get in the car sometimes. I would have just like a little bit left and I want to share with my kids. And they would get in the car and be like, mama, can we have some of your soda? And I'm like, nope, it's not good for you. Mama, can we have some of your soda? No, it's too much sugar. All the while knowing in my mind, it's too much sugar and it's not good for me either. But I was hooked, okay? Like just outright addicted to Dr. Pepper. I was making this decision every single day. And you know what? It started to cost me because then it was adding up. Those dollars every day were adding up day after day, week after week, month after month. Until one day, the kids were in the back seat can we get a soda? Can you just stop so we can get a soda? And we really want a Dr. Pepper too. And I was like, man, the decision that I'm making just like off of something that seems so simple, but the decision that I'm making is negatively influencing my kids. Like they watch everything that I do. They watch every move that I make. And now they're wanting to do the same thing. And even going into it, I knew that it wasn't a good choice to make. I knew that it wasn't a great habit to start, but I did it anyway. And now it's impacting other people around me. And so I started to suffer from headaches. I started to, to gain weight. And I'm just like, you know what you got to do. And so for me, it was a decision of if I want to live a healthier lifestyle, if I want to live a more positive lifestyle, lifestyle and provide a more positive influence for my kids, I had to stop. I had to stop. But it's easy to say, you know what? Tomorrow I'm done. Like I'm not drinking no more Dr. Pepper. I'm not doing anything else. I'm just done with it. It's hard to stop things cold turkey. And this is where God comes in. Because when you really, really present things to him and seek him in your decisions and the paths that you want to take, then God is there to guide you and really push you the whole way through. So it was a moment of, God, I need you because I know I can't do this by myself. I know I can't stop this habit on my own. I've tried it before and it didn't work. Believe me, I tried many times to stop drinking it. It didn't work. But it was that moment where I really, really surrendered it to God. I was like, I am truly addicted to Dr. Pepper and I need you to help me because I don't want my kids to follow the same path that I'm going down. It has been two years, two years since I have picked up a Dr. Pepper. Have people presented me with free drinks? Yes, but I had to exercise my self-control and I had to say, nope, I don't want it because I know if I take that one sip, I'm gonna go back to that same habit that I was doing before. Have people brought me cases of Dr. Pepper because they knew how much I loved it? Yes, and you know what? It's still sitting in my pantry. Everything, everything that could come my way to try to tempt me back into that bad habit has happened. But it was a conscious decision of, God, I need your help to get rid of this bad habit and to start something new. There's a scripture in Romans and it tells us the things that I want to do, I don't do them. But the things that I hate to do are the things that I do. And that's where I was. I hated that I was hooked on this, but I kept drinking them anyway. So eventually you've got to get to a point where you push the sin aside. You've got to take control over sin. You have to say, sin, I'm not going to let you lead my life. Sin, I'm not going to let you lead my decisions. Sin, I'm not going to let you be the lead of my habits. I want to have healthy habits. I want to have good habits. I want to have habits that make other people look at me and say, I want to do those same things. And, and, it, and it starts with you, but it also... It involves the people that you're around, the people that you spend the most time with. You have to be mindful of every single thing that leads to your new and healthy habits, to your new and healthy ways. Because sin is going to present itself. Temptation is going to present itself. But there's a God who's stronger and greater than any sin or temptation. He said that he would make a way of escape. So even when you get in those tough positions and you're, you're, you're stuck at a crossroads of what do I do? You better believe that God is going to give you an opportunity to escape going down the wrong way, okay? So keep those things in mind. Like just know 
that even though I'm here, I'm in this situation, this is what's going on. God has something greater for you. And you've got to be choosing good, healthy habits if you want to see the blessings and the benefits of what God can do in your life. It's worth it. Believe me. I feel better. I'm not as sluggish. I'm not as tired. I don't like crave it and desire it like I used to. And now my kids say, can we have some water? So all around, it was just a better decision for me and for my family because everything I do impacts somebody else. Much the same to you. Everything you do is going to impact somebody else. Every decision you make is going to impact you and somebody else. There's consequences for every action, good or bad. So what decision and what actions are you going to make today that are going to bring about positive results and positive outcomes? Just know we're rooting for you. We're here to encourage you. We will be there for you. All you have to do, hey, is connect with us. There's a number on the bottom of the screen. And if you're just having one of those really hard moments where you're like, I don't know if I can get rid of this habit. I don't know if I can stop hanging with this group of friends. I don't know if I can stop what I've been doing all this time. Shoot us a text at that number and I promise somebody will connect back with you because we want the best for you. We want to see you succeed and we want to see God really move in your heart and in your life so that you can reach out to your friends and they can see the change that God has made in you and they may want the same changes for themselves. We love you guys. I miss you guys. I'm hoping that the world makes a turn around and we see each other again real soon. But until then, always, always, always remember to love, live,